This morning I put out a post asking you guys if you want to see a Bensa video or a router table video. Well, the results are very, very close, but the router table won. So I am going to make a video about something for the router table. This thing I am going to show you today and demonstrate for you, it's essential for the router table. If you own a router table, you absolutely need this. And I really mean it essential, just as essential as a push stick or a push block is your for your um, table saw. This is how this one tool is essential for your router table. And you will see why in a second. Now, before I show you this product, I want you to, if you've seen this product before, and you kind of have an idea what it is, please do not click out once I show it to you because I'm gonna show you what I use it for and I think you will really enjoy this. Um, I use it for something that I don't see a lot of people using it, so let's get right into it. It's easier to show than to explain. The most essential tool for your router table, it's a coping sled. Now you might have seen one of these guys. They come from many brands. You can find them for all kinds of different prices. And you especially see this ones when people make uh, cabinet doors. That's what it's mainly used for cabinet doors. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never made a cabinet door in my life other than one time I took a Rockler uh, routing uh, class. So they teach us how to do cabinet doors, but I've never made one. And uh, that's not what I use it for. I am going to show you the jig. We'll talk a little bit about it. And I'm going to tell you why you need this, even if you don't make cabinet doors. And I'm going to show you what I use it for. So let's take a closer look at the jig itself. So why do you need a coping sled? Well, sometimes you might work with a larger bit like this one or even a bigger one, like I have this chamfer bit over here. This thing is huge. Or you can go crazy with go with a bit that is really big like this. When you work with large bits like this, you need to, you know, open your fence quite a lot to accommodate your bit. You don't want it to chew into your fence. Now, the problem is when you have a piece of stock like this, that is very thin, let's say you make a cabinet door and this is your, you know, frame, you need to run it through your router table. And once you get over here, you see, I have no support from either side of my fence. So this makes for a very, very bad cut. I, my piece will rock like this. This could kick back and take my fingers off. Bad things will happen. I will definitely, definitely not have a good cut by running this like this. Now let's take a closer look at our sled. It has a base. This base does not ride onto the track. So it does not have a miter track over here. This is just pushed against the fence. And this is what this clear plastic is. This um, fence over here, you will just ride right against your rudder table fence. Then we have two handles so we can comfortably and securely hold our jig. We have a toggle clamp. We have a sacrificial piece of wood over here that is uh, hold, held in place by two screws the screws goes on this side through these holes, and that's what holds the sacrificial uh, piece of wood. Then we have this knob over here that has another piece of wood, and this one has some Velcro glued onto the side. That way it has a really good grip on our material. And the way it works is you would go to your router table and you butt this against the fence tightly. You want it to be against the fence tightly. We have the sacrificial piece of wood that is right against my fence. And then I will take my piece of material and I will place it over here. Put it against the fence as well. I hope you can see that. Let me get you closer. So this is our sacrificial board. It goes all the way against the fence. Then I'll put my material here all the way against the fence. My sled, it's against the fence. And I'll be honest with you. I don't like this toggle clamp so much. We'll talk about that in a second. So the way I have it set up is to use it with different thicknesses. I will use different shims to make it tight because I do not want that piece to move around. So I'll just put my little shims over there and let's see, I will lock it in place just like that. So now my piece is secure like downwards with this clamp. It's against the sacrificial piece of wood that is screwed through this piece and then I have this other piece to sandwich it and tighten it 
That way, this will not wiggle this way as well. So it has three, um, it's held in place by three points. One is from this side, this side, and downwards pressure. So now we are ready to make our cut. Let me turn on my dust extractor. And when I make my cut, I will be pushing this against the fence the whole time, and I will slowly move it across. And even when I get to this point where there's no contact through the hole, because I have this clear plastic base, this will ride against the fence, so my jig will go nice and smoothly straight, and I should have a very, very beautiful miter. So let's try that. Now let's see our result. And what we got, it's a perfect miter, a perfect 45 degree angle, no cheaping, everything. Let me just move out of the way so it focuses on the piece of material. Everything is crisp, the cut, the edge. Now this is what I use the coping sled for. I use it to do my miters. And yes, you can do miter cuts on your table saw, but they are never this exact. When you use a table saw, especially like me, I use a job side table saw, it is very hard to get the exact 45 degrees. And even when I use a digital angle finder to put my blade exactly at 45, it might not be, even though it says 45, it might not be 45. It could be 45.2 or 49.8. And then when you go to put your box together or whatever you're building, you will have slight gaps. Now setting up the blade on your table saw is just half the work on getting good miters. Uh, even if you set your blade exactly at 45 degrees, when you feed your material through the table saw, if you are just for a second, let the material shift away from the blade, or if you pause in the middle of your pushing the material through the blade, then you will get gaps. And it's nothing more annoying than making all your cuts and then you're see, seeing that your box or your project doesn't fit together and you have slight gaps. The router table with the chamfer bit, 45 degrees chamfer bit, works differently because there is only one point of contact. So it doesn't matter if your fence is straight or not. When you run this piece of material, it will always be a perfect miter every single time. And because usually when you build boxes or other projects, usually your miters will end up on the end grade. This is a great solution to not get tear out, to you know get nice clean cuts. And this is my preferred method of doing miters. Now, when it comes to these coping sleds, like I said before, there are others that are better qualities. Um, Woodpeckers, they of course have a, two of them, I believe. One of them, I think it's called the Iron Grip, and that is their newest one. It comes with a hefty price, but it is a really, really good quality sled. They also have their original one, which is I think around $200. And what I like about the Woodpecker sled is that the uh, acrylic fence, it's adjustable. So if you have a really large bit that you're working with, you can move the fence more forward and that will give you more clearance between the bit and your sled. This one, it's fixed. It just has some holes where there's these little knobs attached and most of the coping sleds will have just the holes and they're non adjustable. So I really recommend the Woodpeckers one if you could afford it. If not, this one, this particular one, it's made by Rockler. It's a great one, it works great. The only thing I don't like is the toggle clamp and also only has one clamp. If you look at other uh, coping sleds, some of them will have two, three clamps. Uh, there are some non-brand names ones on Amazon. I'll post some in the description below to make it easier for you to find them. Now, the one thing you have to be aware when you're looking for a coping sled for your routing table is to look for the ones that have the acrylic plate that runs against your uh, fence you will see that there are a lot of them that does not have the acrylic plate and those ones are meant to be used uh, without the fence. Those are just for doing uh, roundovers. It's just more like a small piece holder when you're just running your uh, piece of material against a bit that has a ball bearing. So that way you just have something to grab on so your hands are not so close to the um, uh, you know, cutting edge of the bit. So, 
what I like about this, well, it works. It was not expensive. What I don't like about it is the toggle clamp doesn't work so much for me. That's why I'm using the shims. I set it up for a specific thickness. And then when I use something thicker or thinner, I will use the shims. But having one of these guys and doing your miters on a router table would completely forever change the way you do miters. You will never do a miter on your table saw again. I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyler Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.